So that was my first time ever filming anything Star Wars related and pretty much I always thought it would be inevitable for me to film something like this and if you're into After Effects and like visual effects side I'm sure at some point you're going to do some Star Wars related effects. And also with the release of the latest Star Wars movie I thought it was just the perfect time to do these effects and kind of just get my hands into it. Which I haven't seen the movie yet so don't spoil it. I probably won't see it for a few more days after this video is posted, but in this video we're going to break down three different Star Wars base effects through force pushing and force grabbing and also lightsaber effects. Uh, I'm going to have time codes in the description if you want to look at the very specific effects, so you know you don't have to watch you know how to do lightsaber effects if you already know how to do it. So, so this is going to be a fun tutorial. Let's jump into it and let's get started. And a huge shout out to Shane, Josh, and Joseph for being in this. I'm sure you're going to be seeing a lot more of them on the channel. And yes, this is another Josh. So we're going to start off our video by doing lightsaber effects, as you can see right here, this is the shot we'll be doing. And we'll jump over to our clean plate, and this is the shot by itself. And Shane, who's right here on the right, has these amazing lightsabers that we're going to be able to easily track. So it's good to have some sort of lightsaber that you're going to be able to track your effect on top of. And this is all in camera. So to get started, we'll go up to Layer, New, Solid, and click OK. And then we'll go up to Effect, Video Copilot, and we're going to grab Saber. Now this is a free plugin for After Effects created by Video Copilot. So I'm sure a lot of you know about this plugin and everyone knows Video Copilot. So that's what we'll be using here. And when it's in here, you just toggle switch to modes and set your blend mode to screen or add. I like screen. And we have two anchor points here and we can simply just bring one of these on you know, to the end of the lightsaber and put it to the base of it. And then we just have to change up our effects. So one thing we'll do is increase the core size by a little bit. And then we can increase this, uh, the glow intensity to 80. You're going to have to adjust this depending on how big or small, uh, depending on how far away the lightsaber is. So uh, if it's far away, you make sure that's a little bit decreased. If it's closer to the camera, you can increase the glow intensity and also adjust the core size as you see fit. And you come here to glow color and we can change this color to any color that we want. So we could do purple if you want. So now all we have to do is add a keyframe for core start and core end. And we can move back or forward in time. And we just got to go ahead and make sure that these anchor points are tracked up to our, you know, our sword or lightsaber, whatever you're using as a prop. And you're going to have to go frame by frame, just matching this up to make sure it works out well. And if you're moving forward in time, you can see here, if I move this, that the saber effects size gets stretched out. That's because motion blur is enabled. So if you're moving forward in the timeline, go to render settings and change the motion blur to off and you'll be able to see what you're doing a little bit better. But of course, make sure you keep that on when you're done with the effect. So you wouldn't get to track in specific parts of the lightsaber. You can see here that we have a little bit of the lightsaber exposed and some of it back here that's exposed while it's behind his body. And how you're gonna wanna work with this is that you're gonna wanna do this in two separate layers. So you can see I have this all animated along our lightsaber here. And then as it gets into his body, I start to close it up and you can see I continue to keep that part closed up even though you can see the back portion here. So what we'll do is we'll just come here and duplicate this layer by going up to edit duplicate and we'll just turn off the core start and core end keyframes and we'll re-enable those and we'll just go ahead and bring that into the second portion of you know the lightsaber and then we'll continue to move forward and you know move those anchor points accordingly so we don't have to worry about masking behind the body and we keep all these nice glow settings in there. And then when the saber gets disappeared, you can just come here and move this below the frame. And then also what I would do is just drag in the out point or the in point to make sure it's no longer on the screen. And now you should have something like this and it's pretty much very seamless. And we can come here and you know put in our other lightsaber as well. And you're going to want to make sure that your lightsabers are layered correctly. So make sure that whatever's in the foreground is on top of your layers and whatever's in the background like our blue lightsaber here is underneath our green lightsaber so that's highly important to make sure everything's composited correctly now i do want to give a quick shout out to Envato elements which is one of the largest stock footage marketplaces on the internet you know what i dislike as a content producer having to spend hundreds of dollars a month to purchase stock footage music for my videos after effects templates and graphic design templates for my business with Envato elements i can save a ton of money for my business by spending only 16 dollars 50 a month where i can download unlimited music after effects templates stock footage and so much more for my business needs if you want to learn how you can save countless time and money be sure to check our links in the video description which will take you over to Envato elements all right so now we're gonna work on our force push here and it's really easy to do this effect so let's go ahead and jump into our clean plate and we'll get started on doing the force push so here's our originally shot clip just with the lightsaber effects on and you see that shane's acting out as if he's getting force pushed back and, you know and he's not flying back you know past the frame of the shot so he's not 
really that powerful of a force push. So we're going to take him and we're going to just fly him off the screen. So really easy to do this. So what we want to do is when you have your actor acted out, you want to find the peak where they're like in midair. And I think this is our good spot. So what we'll do here is grab our layer and go up to edit split layer. What we're going to do here is grab our brush tool, our rotor brush tool, and we'll double click our clip here. And then simply all we're going to do here is just kind of brush around our talent. And we'll hold down alter on keyboard to get, you know, to mask out anything that's not supposed to be there. And simply what we're doing is we're just rotoscoping. So we're going to grab everything from, you know, his legs, his feet, and then holding on alt to unpaint anything that shouldn't be in there. So obviously, you know, we want to be mindful of, you know, uh, the floor and whatnot. And make sure his hands are all in there. We want to make sure his entire body. And if it's not 100% perfect, that's okay. But let's come here and let's just track forward here and let's kind of just repaint some of the portions of his body that's you know getting kind of masked out so we're just going to paint through just a few frames of this action because you know at some point the effect is just going to fail and i just need a little bit here so when you just have a few frames painted what we'll do is just increase the feather to maybe like 80 to 100 so let's do 80 and that should be fine we'll go back into our main composition and this is what we have so what we'll do here is first we'll duplicate this layer and on the bottom layer, we'll just go ahead and delete the rotor brush. And we'll come here to the rectangle tool and we'll go ahead and just mask our right side of our clip back in there. And I'm gonna take my left side here, which is our rotor brush, and we'll go to layer pre-compose. And I'm just gonna call this mask and move all attributes into new composition. All right, awesome. And I'm just gonna go ahead and just readjust those endpoints there so I know what I'm doing. Then I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this layer. And I'm gonna just right click it, go to time and click on freeze frame. And then I'm going to bring out the out point here and just boom. So we have just a, so we just have a few frames of this animating and then he's frozen in time. Okay, awesome. And we'll take our second mask clip here. I'll hit P on keyboard for position. A lot of keyframe. And we'll move forward by maybe like, a, I don't know, half a second or whatever. And then we'll just move him off frame. And we'll go back in between the keyframes and we can kind of like wiggle this downward. So he's just not following around the same path. So that is looking okay. So we have a little bit more work. One we have to do is bring in back the original background puppet tool, our actor. And to kind of fix this blackness, one thing you can do is add a clean background plate, meaning you're going to want to have your actors clear the frame while you shoot maybe about 10 seconds of a clean background. And then you can just put that underneath your footage and that will cover up the black background. As you can see, it's all in there. And for our freeze frame clip, what we're going to want to do is grab the puppet pen tool. So we'll grab this over here. And we'll just add a few points to our talent. This is good enough. And then we'll just kind of move forward here. Add just a little bit of like, just kind of move these over a little bit and just add just some movement to it. And then we'll just continue to wiggle him uh, a little bit off screen. And then make sure to enable motion blur. Make sure to turn on the top. So the one thing that I've learned about this is that doing this on a wide shot is a little bit harder to sell this effect because it needs to go very far away. So if I'm so if I'm going to reshoot this, I'm going to do this on a much tighter or medium type shot. Um, but there's some things that we can use to fix this to make this a little bit more uh, believable. So two things we need to do. One, we need to add camera shake back to this. And two, we can also scale into this to kind of help sell the effect a little bit. So one thing we'll do is go to layer new null object. And we'll parent all of our current layers to this null object. And right at the point of force push right here, we'll hit Astron keyboard for scale. We'll add a keyframe for it. And we'll move forward by two frames. And we can scale in by a little bit. And then we can also hit shift P on keyboard for position. And we'll add a keyframe for that. We'll move that back to the previous keyframe. And we can kind of just focus over to who's doing the force push. And then we'll make the last keyframe easy ease keyframes by hitting F9 on our keyboard. And then when we add camera shake in a second, it'll really just take the focus away about how far this is. So we'll do this by going to layer, new adjustment layer. And then we'll go to effect, the store, and we're going to add transform. And from here, we'll all click the stopwatch for position. And we'll type in wiggle, open parenthesis, 2 comma 200, close parenthesis. And that second number is just going to depend on how much resolution you have. So just make sure to update that. So now we should have... A little bit of camera shake here just blend in with how we shot this and then we have a little bit of black bordering so what we'll do here is go ahead and create create another null object and then we'll parent null six to this and if there's any black borders just be sure to you know slightly scale in by a touch 
And this way now we have a pretty sellable force push and we're using a big portion of our footage. And if we need to resize anything, just go to P and bring it down and it should be good. And now as you can see in our full resolution that our shot's been reframed and that this force push is a lot more believable compared to our wide shot. So like I said, if I had to reshoot this, I shoot it on a tighter shot. Um, and you know, obviously in the real thing, you would actually have a stunt crew and the right type of you know mechanics to do this. So you know, being able to fix a lot of this effect in post is amazing. And these are the techniques you can implement to really pull this off. And of course, shooting in 4K was a plus for us because we're able to have this extra resolution just to zoom in um, and it looks really nice. For a little bit of force grab, what we have here is a lightsaber that's being pulled off frame here. So the plus side of this lightsaber is we had the actual blade already attached to this uh, to the handle. So we just had Shane just wiggle the handle off camera here and then just pull it out of frame. So the only thing we have to do is take off the blade and you can use like string or pretty much anything to help grab this because you want to be able to kind of create this shake in camera. So what we'll do, we can just come here and grab our mask tool and we just mask really closely to the blade here and i'm going to just grab everything because there are going to be shadows and stuff that from this blade and then just set this to subtract we can feather it just by a little bit i don't want to do too crazy and then we'll hit mr keyboard for mass path add a keyframe for that and then just move the keyframes as you see fit frame by frame so now we have this perfectly animated off frame and all we have to do here is just duplicate our layer delete the bottom mask uh, we'll right click it, go to time, and click on freeze frame. So this is a compositing and an in-camera practical effect all put together to help us out here. And for the next shot, we have the handle being thrown into Shane's hand off frame and he's just catching it. And then in post, we're just animating the lightsaber to animate on and it works out perfectly. So those are three common Star Wars type effects that you might work with if you ever do VFX with Star Wars footage. So I hope you found this video fun and entertaining and also very useful. If you are new to our channel and if you like this video, be sure to hit that subscribe button because we post multiple post-production tutorials like this every single week right here on the channel. You can also hit me up my social media networks. Those links are in the video description and always be creating. <music>